Hey, welcome to Common Comic Covers. I'm Jeremy. I'm Andy. And this is an appreciation podcast for non-key comics. Hello, everybody. Hello in the comic world. Uh, thanks for joining us. Take a quick second. Subscribe if, you, if you'd like. If you want to wait a few minutes before you do that, that's fine as well. But we always appreciate subscribes and likes. Follow us on Instagram. I think that's it for now. Um, I haven't checked X in about uh, six months. Formerly Twitter, right? Formerly Twitter. Yeah. When do we stop doing that? When do we I don't just... think we ever stop doing that because otherwise it's a porn sh- site or something like that. Oh, so we just, we always say X formerly I Twitter. <laughs> I think that's how you have to refer to it. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, I'll be the 20th person or the 100th person to make the reference. It's like when Prince was the artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> X, the social media site formerly known as Twitter. Uh, don't don't follow us there clearly we have no idea what we're doing but thanks for joining us um we're excited today we have some common covers uh that we're going to share with you and then we are going to share a purchase and then at the our last little bit today we're going to do something we like to call trash or treasure and this is where um either andy or i i've done it once but today andy's going to go on a blind date with a couple of dollar bin comic books that I'll read to him and he'll um, grade me on my my performance and oh, yeah. the writing of the comic. So Andy, what is your common comic cover this week? Oh yeah, this is a this is a really cool one. Um, this is the mini Ghosts of Doctor Graves. They had a uh, oh boy, I can't see the glare. Sorry, they had um, two series of this. This is the first series. Uh, this is from September of sixty seven. Um, the cover is done by uh, Rocco A or Rocky uh, Mastro, sorry, Mastro Cerrero. I think I said that wrong. And, and um, I know, I think you nailed it. I nailed it. Mastro <laughs> Torino. There you go. Did you get it? Mastro Torino. Yeah, I think that. Wow. <laughs> nice job. Master, Master, no, Mastro no, no, no. No, stop. Torino. Stop. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and you then have add. to list, lift your glasses up to read a name. <laughs> I'm like, uh. what? Hey, bud, it might be time for it's, progressives. No, I can't do it. Well, it's like the last name is right here. Master Master Serio. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, he grew up in Hell's Kitchen, New York City, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, and uh, like Joe Orlando, which is another uh, famous artist he was friends with as uh, children. Um, and so this came out in September of 67. He died in March of 68. So this is towards the end of his career. Um, yeah, but I, uh, without knowing any of that, I just really liked the cover. I thought it was beautiful. Um, the he doesn't do the interiors, uh, but and it's the, a, it looks like it's a charlatan. Yeah, uh, Charlton, Charlton, Char- Charlton, 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 uh, Charlton Comics. Yes. Uh, one day I'll get it right. Yeah. Is that Doctor Strange in the corner there? It is not. Um, totally, totally looks like Doctor Strange. Yeah. I know it's yeah, not yeah. Doctor Strange, but yeah, it looks like him. Yeah, like a, I mean, Stan Lee never like ripped took, anyone off. No, no. so mm-hmm. it's yeah. not. That's yeah. awesome. That's beautiful. Um, covers have kept. Now, is this a translucent guy coming through some curtains mm. here? Yeah, we got a um, an older gentleman and a what is that? A it looks like a crystal ball here. Crystal ball, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so maybe it's like a. Great. How did you get in? What I can't see. I can see through you. You're a ghost, but that means you're. And the ghost says, "Dead." Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not dead. But you will be shortly. Oh, that's great! That's a yeah. beautiful book. Would that set you yeah. back if I can ask? You know, I don't. I don't recall. Um, I don't think it was a lot. Um, it was one of those. I think it was one of those. There's a book here, but I'm gonna like try to get value by combining shipping, something like that. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. That's so, awesome. Uh, I love it. What do you got? 
Yeah, kind of a fun one. Uh, this is Machine Man. Mm. There we go. Machine yeah. Man 2020. This came out in, I want to say, 1994. This is a Barry Windsor Smith cover. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so these, this is number one. Mm -hmm. And number one and number two are the only only ones in the series. And it's just a reprint of number one. So number one here is a reprint of the 1984 volume two machine man, number one and two. Yeah. I have the, those yeah. Yeah. Canadian price variant. Oh man. And now it's an official <laughs> common comic cover episode. We've talked about Canadian price variants. So, um, I like Barry Windsor Smith. He uh, leans more towards the painting of things. With these two, they are different covers um, than than the original volume two of Machine Man. So you do get different covers here. Um, hey, our favorite penciler on this series, Herb Trimpey. Oh. And yeah. um, uh, DeFalco is the writer. Um, at that time in 1984, I want to say Shooter was just out the door. And DeFacco was coming in as the the new editor at Marvel. I might be a year or two off on that one. I can't remember when they ousted Jim Shooter. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think this was before that. I think Shooter left in 87, 88. Can't remember quite. But yeah. anyway, irrelevant to this. But, you know, I think yeah. Barry Windsor Smith does that great. Um, he's he to take that out of the plastic so we can... I don't want to damage this. I know. Is it in good condition? No, I got it in the dollar bin. That could have been a trash or treasure read. You know, I, I have so many dollar bin comics. Uh, that's yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's cool. I like how he's in it twice. I don't. I don't know how to describe his art very well. It's. To you me, know, it's, can it's you like, put it back you, up? I was like, talking while you're doing that, and no one got to see it but me. I'm sure. Yeah, sorry. It's like futuristic realism um, is probably the best way that I can describe this piece. I know you shared an Iron Man from a few weeks ago um, where I think, you know, Barry Windsor Smith out of England found a success here in the States. Um, again, he's one of those for me and why I grabbed these, you know, they were just kind of cool there in a dollar bin, but he's one of those artists where I'm going to grab that book, especially if it's a dollar. Heck, I might even spend like upwards of three dollars. You can go on eBay right now and buy this book and number two for less than ten dollars. Um, you get new covers from uh, Barry Windsor Smith in both of them, and the stories are fine. Machine Man's kind of a cool character. I want to say his first appearance was in um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, right. number something by Jack Kirby, yeah, number eight. Um, Number eight, thank you. So, yeah. fun character, fun book. Go check it out. Um, but before you go check it out and close us, make sure you subscribe. Okay. Um, and then tell us in the comments if you're watching this, which one, which of our common covers do you like better? Which which one oh, yeah. spoke to you the most? It's not a competition as long as you pick mine. But um, yeah. you had Andy's ghost and my um, machine machine man. man. So Andy, yeah. we're gonna throw it back to you now. What is this? Is this a buying, reading, collecting? This is a it? collecting. Yeah, this is a. I was on an Instagram live sale, and uh, it was on Carmine's comments comics, and he had it as like a steal, which is like this new thing that are, people are introducing. Whereas you don't make offers; you just buy it at that price. And it was a, so I got it, but I still made an offer, and he's like, "Yeah, okay." Um, but this is uh. Journey into Mystery 112, and I've been trying to um, collect Hulk comic books, but not his first five issues, just because I don't want to um, spend that much money on Hulk comic books yet. But this issue is, um, one, you have Hulk trying to rip away Mjorn, or uh, Hulk's hammer, right? Mjol Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I always get confused. Uh, and that is his, and, and also has the origin of Loki. And it's the first battle between Hulk and Thor. And it is the first appearance of King Laffery. 
which is Loki's biological dad. So, yeah, that's amazing. Now, where, what, am, what am I gonna, um, how much, how much is this going to set me back if I'm going over and I'm looking for a 2.0 somewhere? A hundred dollars. That's not bad. No. Yeah. I mean, I bought this one for a hundred dollars. I think it's, it's probably better than a 2.0, but I think it'd be hard to find it. I think it gets so compressed. The price is like, it's probably worth a hundred, 200 bucks or a hundred bucks at like of two Oh and a four Oh. <laughs> It's probably like this. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might uh, as well spend $20 more and get a 4.0. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's a great book. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I, 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 you know, I made a goal list of, uh, two comic books I wanted this year. Um, and they were both, one of them was Hulk related. And really, this is like, that was 1A which is fantastic for number 12. And this is like one B it's like very, very close to that one. So I was like, Oh, I can get this one affordably. Let's just do that now. So yeah. Yeah. I was really happy to get it. Um, and I'm, I flipped through it. Why you now? Why it. is this book on one of, on your list of books I want this year? Well, I, books, I you, books you want this year, not I, you. Yeah, no, it's good. I um, I collect the Flash and the Hulk. Um, at least I started that eight years ago. I think I started collecting the Flash and the Hulk, and um, I've almost completed the Flash Silver Age, like through to two hundred. Um, but which is all I really care. And which is like bronze age too, a little bit, but, um, the, uh, the Hulk, I didn't do as much. I got a lot of the mid keys. Like I got the, uh, first appearance of the characters that mattered in the Hulk run. Uh, you should get, um, yeah. Hulk one eighty one. <laughs> yeah. That, I don't, I don't have that one. Yeah. That's a, neat, so there's, that's a, that's a neat yeah. book. So there's certain books that I'm just like, I don't. There's a reason. There's a facsimile, right? Yeah, I did, and I do have the facsimile of that and 180. So I and when I was actually bought them when I was in Spokane, I believe. So yeah, you know, I'm coming around on facsimiles. You know, originally I was like, no way, but you know, there's just certain books where it's like, you know, I don't mind if I just buy the facsimile because I and maybe this will change. I don't want to spend seven hundred dollars on. Tomb of Dracula number 10. Yeah. I, re- I really don't. Um, I'm okay spending yeah. $200, but yeah. I'm I'm at the place where it's like, how about I spend $10 on a fix simile and $190 on something else? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, th- yeah. It's getting to the point where the original books are so expensive that the reprints or the facsimiles can actually makes sense like the gold record reprints like the those uh, you know you know spider-man number one reprinted three years after it originally came out looks almost identical um and you can get that fairly affordably so good yeah all right andy we're going to take a commercial break i'm going to put you on the spot here right now oh yeah good you, you know in case there's some listeners uh, or some viewers right now that maybe don't collect comic books or just starting to collect comic books What's one thing that they need to know and or what's one book that they should go out and buy or what's your recommendation? Maybe that what's what's your what's Andy James is collector of comic books for 30 plus years. What's your one piece of advice as someone that might be thinking, you know, I'm not going to start collecting comic books, but I wouldn't mind buying one or two. Wow. Uh, that is a hard. Um... I think the first the first best money you can spend on comic books is probably the Overstreet price guide. <laughs> uh, but then um and then you just learn about comic books that way you just peruse through all the information and all the first appearances, the origins and you just kind of get to know comic books. Um 
And then, I love I love that that's your answer. I did not I didn't know where you were going to go. Um, we did not prep. You did not know I was going to ask you this question, but you are absolutely spot on. My one of my kids, um, it's kind of tapered off uh, right now, but he got into collecting comic books, and that is exactly what he did. He checked out the newest Overstreet from the public library. He did not return it for over two years, but he's a oh youth, gosh. so there's no there's he, t- he gave it back. Um, but you're spot on. And he would ask me questions. I'm like, buddy, just look in the overstreet and he would find it. And, and I'm just thinking that's exactly what I did too. I bought an overstreet and it just teaches you everything you need to know. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, if you're wanting to kind of get into it, I like that. I'll, 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 I'll take off the spotlight off you for now, but yeah, that was, that was, that was rough. Answer. I was really digging there. I was like, I don't know what. If you, like, if you don't know, Overstreet has been around since oh, yeah. 1983, 1970s. 1970s. Wow. And yeah. every year they put out, I want to say it's in August. It doesn't matter. Every year right. they put out a new price guide. Um, before eBay, it was what comic books were worth. When you'd walk into yeah. a comic book shop, they're looking at the Overstreet. You're looking at the Overstreet. eBay has changed that game. Um, yeah. <laughs> over over street will say ten dollars and you'll have to buy it on ebay for a hundred dollars so the prices are way off but the over street will give you who wrote it who drew it um if you just want to get into the weeds uh it's about this thick there's great articles um for me i buy i i not as much anymore but i would buy an over street like once every two or three years because it's just it doesn't change too, too much. Um, and yeah. I would just wait until like a couple were out and I'd get the, the one from two years ago for super cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can one, get them used awesome. for affordable. Yeah. Wonderful piece of advice. And I think last time you were here in Spokane on the free counter, I think you grabbed like two or three old over streets that were just sit, sitting on the counter. I know my son grabbed one of them. Um, and those were, those are fun. Yeah, no, I, uh they have like a little bit of a collectability to them but yeah they're they're cool um yeah okay, okay. Like so if you're, if, if you're wanting to know a little bit about comic books comic book world i think a great way to spend honestly ten dollars yeah um don't don't spend more than ten dollars find an overstreet comic book from five or six years ago uh, yeah. price guide go on ebay it's a it's yeah. a put it in the bathroom yeah <laughs> Well, if you if you know one of us and you want to know about comic books, you can ask us and we can lend you one too. So yeah, I'll, I'll give you one. Yeah, I have I have many. I have so. plenty. Yeah, I have plenty. <laughs> hey, I'm going to talk about mine. So um, yeah, have I've got a couple stacks here of books, but one I want to share. Um, it's a book I've never had, and it's it's kind of right up there with the the Tomb of Dracula number ten. It's really hot right now. I tried not to wait, uh, or I try to wait, but um, it is Daredevil Volume 2, Number 9, First Appearance of Echo. Oh, nice. I loved the show. Oh, yeah, I did so too. So much. Um, I was not going to buy this book. I was going to wait and because uh, the prices are a little high on it right now, but they've been kind of steadily in the mid Oh, 50, 60, 70 range for a while, but I watched that show and I just love everything that it stood for with the character of Echo and how different she was to, you know, the traditional superhero and like it just, and then it was great. It was good. I, I don't want to just sit here and talk about the show, but I loved it. And I was like, I, I'm collecting this run again anyway. Um, I never had this. I, my original run was just the Kevin Smith run. Mm. Sold it. Now I have it all back. And I'm just kind of slowly working up. I love the book because it's a David Mack cover. Who, yeah. Great. Again, he's one of those people where if I see a Kabuki, that's just a random Kabuki, I'll grab it. Um, it, it just his art. It's uh, kind of a watercolor, almost abstract, impressionist um, style. Yeah. But it's a great book. I think I got a pretty good deal for it. Um, I did an uh, I did a best offer or best offer at forty five. Person accepted it. Great. Sorry about that. I'm um, I'm giving this you know a little bit of a roll in the top staple, but I would 
I, uh, I'd put this at a 7.8.0. Nice. And, and again, I think if I waited six months, I'd probably pay 35, 45. 45. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not, not at, you know, at that point, it's like, we're talking 10, $15. Yeah. Um, and, and I will say, you know, we've talked a little bit about undervalued books. I don't, I don't think yeah. this is quite in that category, but you know, if you're, if you're looking for something to buy that's less than a hundred dollars, that's a great book and a good yeah. collectible book. This is this is a great one. Uh Casada's the writer on this, yeah. Max, the artist. I book. think it, it came out in like uh nineteen ninety nine. Ninety nine? So yeah, that's ninety nine. So you had these books in the wild, they weren't getting sent directly to CGC. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um yeah, December of nineteen ninety nine is this it was this one started. Volume two started. Yeah in let me look it up 1998 is when volume two started yeah i i picked that one up i started collecting daredevil at number like 10 or 11 and so i went back and really quickly picked up those back issues yeah um and i have one through 16 and then a few later on uh in the 50s when when max doing it by himself yeah but yeah no david mack so great um yeah i can't i can't express like out of all the comic book creators i've met he is by far the the most humble nicest one that i've met yeah you talked about that last time and yeah you talked about his muscles as well <laughs> <laughs> hey, and yeah. it's that time we're gonna we're gonna dig into uh either some trash or some treasure you ready for that yeah i think okay. i think that's gonna i'm in a good mood so it's you might okay. I might take a second date. Just kidding. Sorry. So, um, <laughs> this is a little segment we like to call Trash or Treasure. I have two, count it, two dollar bin comic books in front of me here. I'm going to read each one. After I read one, Andy's going to give me a grade. He's going to give the book a grade. We're going to see if we're going to go on a second date. Are you going to keep reading this or are you done with this book? I'm going to do my best to disguise characters. Can, as much can as I stop can. you? Like, if it's just like so bad, can I stop you? You, you can do whatever you want. Is there, is there a safe word on our date that I could like text my friend, say help or? You know, a no means no. So if you just tell me to stop, I will stop. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, we are in a restaurant here. There's three people. Okay. We have a gentleman. Looks like he might be with uh, a lady, and then we have an, an, an another fellow here. This is a tavern on the garden in New York Central Park. Is this uh, two different locations or the same location? Same location. Oh, same okay. location. Sorry, okay. I did. I set up the scene, and then it set up the scene for me. I didn't realize that. Oh, okay, okay. Um, because I have not read this book yet. It's a dollar big comic. <laughs> We're just going with it. <laughs> it's a double Perhaps, bond, Okay, so this is one of the people. Perhaps if we arrange to have Hank join us once more, the positive visibility would be welcome. And the, this other guy says, you you really think that's necessary? We live in a razor's edge of public tolerance. Mutants are, oh, shoot. We are too isolated of late, too embroiled in our own concerns. Never has this been more dangerous if we don't. And then the next, uh, a shrieking noise, like shree, and they're covering their ears. Mm. And, and now the lady who hasn't spoken yet says, that, that, that noise is agonizing. The one gentleman says, it's, it's aimed at us. It's constantly changing. Sonic frequency prevents us from concentrating, from using our powers. Oh, my. But, but why? Because you're a mutant. You dirty mutant scum. And then an explosion. <laughs> uh huh. Mine is the power and the responsibility to observe. All, this is a new person. Yeah. All that has been, all that will be. Huh. But more, I also watch what might have been in the numberless alternate realities where the events of history diverged from those you know. This is the one such reality where events will unfold that have grave consequences. Okay, stop. So that's the watcher, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good job. So he's 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 the like explaining like there's some event happening right now. Okay. And it's an X book. 
Sure. You're not going to guess yeah. what book it is, but yeah, yeah, you're, 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 yeah. you're in the right. It's all in angels. It's X force. I don't know. No. Okay. Which, what is it? This is what if cable had destroyed the X-Men. Okay. So it's a what. Look at okay. Look at that. Kurt Busick is the writer on this. Great. I, like I actually, this, liked it. I love Kurt Busick. Sure. Yeah. What do you think? How, how did I do? You did great. Yeah. You did, did great. I? Yeah. I, gave, I said I, mutants, but that's all right. That's all right. I think uh, I would have guessed that, anyways. Uh, I think it was that was a home run. That was a a nine, nine on both. Uh, yeah, um, I don't disagree. Yeah, I. I was, we got a we got a pro though with Kurt Busick on the writing. Yeah, I feel like the Watcher's underutilized too. He's such an interesting. Yeah. You know. Okay, so I'm sorry. Did you score? Yeah, nines. Nines both ways. Yeah, that's amazing. Not? Okay, all right. I told wow. you I was in a good mood. Okay, well let's let's keep, let's keep that going. Hey, this next one, I'll give you the title of this book or this story. It's called My Lord's Daughter. Let's. I'm that throw. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to My throw Lord's you. My Lord's Daughter. And uh, our, sort of our of per, our main main character here is just walking, and these are um, these aren't thought bubbles, but no one's around to hear it. <clears throat> so you know he's having one of those reflective moments that we all have as we walk through a forest. I walked alone on a windset plain. A dozen other samurai had preceded me, but I passed their bodies hours ago. My lord's daughter had been kidnapped by an oni. My lord had promised half his kingdom to the only who returned his only child. And then battle, big battle. Looking off in the distance, a, a dust cloud, a bakemono, monsters, hmm. 40,000 of you demons. And then there's this battle. This is still our guy talking. <laughs> if you had twice the number, then the odds would almost be even. Well, that's awesome. Okay, stop. He's, he's battling. So, Poor fools. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but it was. No, that's great. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, I padded the it, book today. I'm not going to lie to you. You what? I brought you pros. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, I was like that. I have, I had such a like strong Ronin vibe initially. Yeah. But um, so who do you, what do you think? What do you think it is? Oh, what do I think it is? Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. I don't know. I don't, I haven't really delved into like. Okay. So this is Yusagi Yojimbo. Yojimbo. Oh, awesome. And it's a Stan Sakai. It's a random right. one, right? Number 27. Found it in the dollar bin. Oh, awesome. You, you can't leave this behind in a dollar bin. No. That's... How, did I do, how did I do? What do you give the book? Oh, those nines. Maybe you were an eight, but it was a nine. That was great. That was, I was really. Right. Wasn't that a great book? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was really good. You can't go wrong with Kurt Busick. At least I haven't gone wrong. Uh, he's one of the ones I think I've told you before when I read Astro City. Um, Early on in my comic book collecting, I was kind of just a let's, you know, cool covers. And then I read Astro City and I was like, oh, dang, there's people that know how to write comic books. Uh, yeah. And I really like Kurt, Kurt Busick's writing. Yeah. 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 He's cool. Um, hey, Andy. Oh, sorry. Did you have another, another thought? No, that's All it. right. Yeah. I think that's about it. We've gone through our common covers. We've shared what we're buying. And you went on two successful blind dates with Crasher Treasure. We have two pieces of treasure. Mm. So two dollars well spent in out of my I, bank account. I think if I went on those dates successively, I would have gone with the Usagi Yojimbo, though. Like that would have yeah. been the one I went on a second date with. Yeah. So all right. You guys all had right. a, you had a good connection. Hey, again, yeah. <laughs> follow us on Instagram if you want to. But definitely uh, subscribe if you like this. I uh, subscribe if you think it was okay. Yeah. And until we see you next time, I'm Jeremy. I'm um, Andy, and uh, like Ringo Starr says, peace, love, peace, love.